All right, module five, lesson 16, lesson objective, draw trapezoids to clarify their attributes and define trapezoids based on their attributes. Central question, how can drawing trapezoids help clarify and define the attributes? Now, we're not gonna be drawing them during this video, but when you come to class, you will, okay? And I'm hoping drawing them is gonna help you really be able to identify each one of these figures based on the properties or attributes they have, okay? A standard is MAFS5G23. Understand what attributes belonging to a category of a two-dimensional figures also belong to all category, subcategories of that category. Now, toward the end of here, I'm gonna be having a, like a flow chart for you. And I want you to copy it on a, on a different, on a separate sheet Okay, because you're going to be adding to it every day when I do these videos. Okay, so let's get started. First, we have some definitions we need to clarify. First off, polygons. Now, this is previous year's learnings. Remember, a polygon is a closed plane figure bound by three or more segment lines. So, if you notice, it says three or more segment segment lines, and that's because the triangle, you would have to have three three segments in order to make a closed figure, okay? So it makes sense that you'd have to have at least three sides. And then it goes up from there. But as long as they have three attributes, they're all classified as polygons. And the first one being closed figure, three or more sides, and the last one being no curved edges. In other words, they have to be straight lines. They cannot be curved. Now, let's talk about quadrilaterals. Quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. So in order they still got to have a closed figure. They still have to have three or more sides. They still have to have no curved edges, okay? But a quadrilateral is a polygon that only has four sides. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. And all these you see here, all those are actual polygons now this one over here for instance that i'm drawing the air by that is a trapezoid and we're going to be seeing other type of subcategories that all meet those properties of the trapezoid okay so now we know a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon so now out of all these shapes that we've defined that are polygons I want you to identify which ones are quadrilaterals. So go ahead and pause the video and identify which figures are quadrilaterals and which ones are non-quadrilaterals. Start the video back up when you're ready. All right, now let's see how you did. Here are our quadrilaterals. Let me get my pen here. Why is my pen not where? There it is. Okay, so we know A, B, D, e, excuse me, F, G, H, J, K, and N are all quadrilaterals because they're four sided polygons. Now, the non quadrilaterals would be. C, this one here, because it has five sides. E, here, because it actually has six sides. I, here, because that's a triangle, three sides. We have L, which is a five-sided, which is a pentagon. M, which is a six-sided figure, and O, which is not even a polygon because it has curved edges. All right. So let's go a little bit further. Now, out of the quadrilaterals that we have identified, which ones we classified as trapezoid as a subcategory and which ones would be a non-trapezoid. Now, trapezoids are quadrilaterals with at least one set of parallel sides. Okay. So, Go ahead, pause the video, identify them, and start the video again when you're ready. 
All right, let's see how you did. First off, which ones could be classified as trapezoids? Well, we can see A would be, because it has at least one set of parallel sides. B would be, D would be, J down here would also be, and K. All those would be known as trapezoids because they're quadrilaterals, but they also have at least one set of parallel sides. Now, how about non-trapezoidal? Well, N, if we look at N, okay, right here, even though it has four sides, it does not have one set of parallel sides. So that is a non-trapezoid quadrilateral, okay? All right, now one thing I needed to clarify, because if you were to go on Google or Bing or something like that, and you search for trapezoids, okay, you're gonna come up with some different shapes. And it depends on which definition you're actually using. There's two different definitions for trapezoids. So let's take it the first one. The first one would be what they call the exclusive definition. And this is saying that there would only be one set of parallel sides. Okay, in that definition, the two figures we see here would be the only trapezoids, okay? Because if you notice, they have, oops, let me get my pen here. Their two parallel sides would be one here and one here. They're parallel to each other. And this one and this one are parallel to each other. So since they only have one set, these would only be the only two trapezoids, okay? Now the second definition would be known as the inclusive definition. And the inclusive def definition says we have at least one set of parallel sides, okay? Now the inclusive definition is the one we are using, okay? This is the good one for us, okay? So if you notice, we still have these two trapezoids, okay? But then we have subcategories where parallelograms, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, since they have at least one set, they can also be classified as a trapezoid, okay? So remember, we are not, and I repeat, we are not using the exclusive. So when you Google and it says, this is this trapezoid, or this is the only set of trapezoid, that is not true, because we are using the inclusive definition, okay? Okay, now it's time to draw the flow chart I've been talking to you about. And make sure you have one or two pages here that are totally blank, so that as you draw this, you can add on to it during the rest of the week, okay? All right, so we're gonna start first with polygons. And we know a polygon has to have three attributes, which is one, it has to be three or more sides, two, they have to be closed figures, and three, no curved edges. And that makes it a polygon. Now, we are gonna be primarily concerned with quadrilaterals. And a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Still has to meet all the attributes of a polygon, but it has four sides. Now, if you notice the arrow going between quadrilaterals and polygons, and that arrow is a one direction, okay? Because all quadrilaterals can be classified as polygons, but not all polygons could be classified as quadrilaterals. Because if I had a polygon which was a triangle, would that be a quadrilateral? No, it only has three sides. So remember that arrow is a one direction only. All right, now from quadrilaterals, we can split it up to trapezoids. And we know by now that we're using the inclusive definition, so we have at least one set of parallel sides. And that makes it a trapezoid or a subcategory of a trapezoid. Now that means we also have non-trapezoids. And that would be, mean that they have no parallel sides. Now I'm gonna give you two examples. We'll be going into more of them later, but I just wanna show you. Okay, first one be a kite, and we will be drawing more of these later. But a kite has no parallel sides, 
okay? They do have some other attributes such as adjacent sides are equal and, um, but we'll be working with them later. Another one's an irregular quadrilateral. Now we will not be drawing irregular quadrilaterals, okay? And an irregular quadrilateral just means it has no parallel sides, it has no equal sides, okay? But it is a quadrilateral, okay? It doesn't meet the requirements of a trapezoid. So that makes it a non-trapezoidal, okay? All right. All right, so that's it for today. Make sure you save that um, flow chart because we're going to be adding to it. So when you come to class tomorrow, we'll be drawing trapezoids, okay? All right, see you tomorrow.